Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me right now and say, Father, I demand from you today my daily bread. And I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. It's your right to ask for your daily bread. Now, I know sometimes we want to think like sophisticated people. Uh, why would you be asking God, hey, Jesus is the wisest and he said, ask. <laughs> it's good. Ask so that you will receive and your joy may be full. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, that's our team scripture for the month. As we begin to round off the month, we begin to also um, see how we can round off this teaching. We, we're, we've been talking about being formed or being in the image of God. Now, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, we are his product. He created us, praise God. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Now, why did he say created in Christ Jesus? He is talking about those of us that are born again. I explained you know, some of these things to you yesterday. He is talking about those of us that are born again. That's why I said created in Christ Jesus. And the purpose of our lives, the purpose of our creation, is that we do those good works that God has preordained for us to walk in. I love the Amplified. The Amplified goes on to explain. It's a living the good life which God has prepared ahead of time. Living the good life which God has prepared ahead of time. Hey, brothers and sisters, it's not a bad life that we were planned for. It's a good life that God orchestrated. It's a good life that God planned for us to live in. If you are living anything short of a good life, then you're not living in this um, scripture. You are not fulfilling the word of God. It's not a matter of confession. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm his workman. No, no. Are you living the good life? Now, I know sometimes you, you might think living the good life means covetousness. No, not necessarily. You know how some, sometimes you, you know how one can bastardize your mind that you just feel even to smile is an expensive venture. You know, there are people like that. They can't even smile. Because they, I mean, Christians now, because they feel smiling is carnal. We're in serious business here. <laughs> it's God. So, so we can't smile, we can't play. No, I play for what? Souls are perishing. What, what do you mean? Hey, there is a good life that God prearranged for us. And that's what he's talking about. He wants us to walk in that good life. You know, when people don't walk with the Holy Spirit, I'll tell, I'll tell, I'll tell you this truth. The church will not advance until we have more people walking with the Holy Spirit. You see, because now we find out from the scriptures that there is a good life that God has prearranged for us before we were even born, okay? And he wants us to walk in that life. Now, whatever mentality you have concerning that life, it might be right, it might be wrong. Your mentality about life might be shaped or may have been shaped by wrong teachings. But when you yourself are in partnership with the Holy Spirit, now, by experience, the Holy Spirit will begin to teach you what the meaning of this scripture is. No man can give you the perfect explanation of this but the Holy Spirit. And when, when the Holy Spirit begins to do, he doesn't just talk to you. He guides you into all truth. That's what Jesus said. He guides you into all truth. Have, have the Holy Spirit ever led you to, to do something just for yourself that was expensive before? Now, you might be this kind of a person who feels um, some things are too expensive. See, someone say, oh, um, for example, say, 
okay, let, I want to travel to another city. And a thought crosses your mind. Why don't you fly to that city? Fly, do you know how much ticket is? Ha! Ah, can't fly. It's too expensive. I can't spend that kind of money. Souls are perishing. Now, that may be your idea. Say, no, instead of to fly, I'll go and join the bus. I'll go by road. Now, another person may say, ah, you don't know what you're missing. Look, I, I miss nothing. And in your mind, you just think it's luxury spending that kind of money to fly. See, now then, here you are, you want to travel. And for some reason, you're so delayed that you now know that the only way you can meet up that, that appointment is when you fly. Now, I'm assuming you have never flown before. And the reason you have never flown, not because you couldn't afford it, but because you just feel it's too expensive to fly. You see, as long as you can go by road, that's what I mean. So you keep dragging and then you have this experience where now you have no option. If you don't fly, you miss the meeting. Ah, so you're like, hey, spend all that money. You'll be thinking, can we ship the meeting? Can't we? No, you can't. Then you are forced to make that decision. Ah, okay, let me pay for it. And then you pay for the ticket. You get into the airplane. You look around and just wonder. Then for the first time, you realize, these people inside here with me, they don't have two heads. You look at younger people, ah, what's wrong with me? And then you fly all the way. Then you see how easy it is that you got to your destination and no stress, time. Uh, you've gained so much time. See? And then you walk out of that place and then you begin to, I know this thing. So you begin to hear the Holy Spirit. So, so how is life now? And it's better, but car is expensive. Oh, but you can afford it. Ah. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's too expensive. Now, the Holy Spirit is dealing with you. See? And then, another time, the same thing happens. You're forced to fly. And then you go, oh, Lord, this, this thing, I'm spending a lot of money. And then the Holy Spirit begins to work on your mind. Begins to work on your mind. And then, like, okay, the two times you have flown, did you die? Didn't you still have money to do other things you needed to do? It's, you know, say, it's true. It's true. Why don't you start flying? Ah, I think I should really consider this thing. And then you now build your mind to accept it that it's okay to fly. It's okay to spend that money. Then you make up your mind. And then you see how life is so easy now compared to what you were thinking before. Now you see, the money was never your limitation. Your mind was. Your mind. And this is the same way a lot of people have been held in bondage, not living the good life. I use this to, to, to explain what I mean, you know, by, by living the good life. It's just an example, okay? So, oh, I'm not saying living the good life is only by, you know, flying and stuff like that. No. Now, now, some people... God has blessed them with their own airplanes. Now you on this other side, you will just think that, eh, how can he spend all that money to buy one born person, have his own plane? Eh? Is it that he cannot enter commercial airlines? Now, you see, it's not everybody, you know, sometimes, especially when you see pastors do this thing, everybody comes down on them. They are using church money. You know, no, not necessarily. Now people just believe in the good life that God has prearranged for them. And as they grow in it, they expect more from the Lord. They grow in it, they expect more from the Lord. Why? So that they can be a blessed, they can, they can be more, I mean, they, they, they can increase the impact of their blessing. See? Hey, but it costs so much money. Is it your money? Truly. And don't think, don't think it's every pastor that is concerned about um, everybody's money, using other people's money. Not necessarily. If you are not in this thing, practicing this thing, you may just sit out there and say, hey, look at them. Hey, it's their church money that they are, they are using for all these things. But come to think of it. 
Now we know there are false teachers, we know there are false prophets, we know there are false brethren also. Everything has good and bad, real and, and, and fake. We know that. And sometimes we major on the, the false narrative as against the, the truth. There are true ministers of God who are diligent in their work with the Lord and they've got integrity. Yes, there are. There are, I'm telling you the truth. And, and people who walk by faith. And when they walk by faith, they, they for example, uh, a minister can be driving a very good car. Doesn't mean he, he went to cajole people to buy him that car. No, not necessarily. He can just simply believe in the Lord and say, Lord, um, I, I need a better car. This, this car is really giving me some problems. I need a better car. And he, he will never mention it to anybody. I experienced that so I can tell you the truth about it. Without mentioning it to anybody, he's just following the Lord and serving the Lord and, and, and doing what God wants him to do. And one day God raises somebody, hey, buy him a good car. And the person buys him a good car. He may not come out and say, so and so person bought me the car. You see him driving a good car. You just conclude that yes, he, he, he has used church money to buy a new car. And even if he uses church money to buy a new car, do you know the underlying issues? Do you know the basis? Do you know if he received command from the Lord to buy a new car? He used church money. Is it your money? Now, I, I say this with the understanding that there are people who, who are evil in this way. Do you understand what I'm saying? But then, I'm talking to you as a person. Your perception of things. Some things you get angry at, some things you get concerned about, they are necessary. If a man is doing the work of the ministry, if a man is doing the work of God, it's none of your business trying to find out how is he doing? How is he getting the money for this? Money? Except you have proof or you have reasons to think that something is wrong somewhere. Now, if you have reasons to think something is wrong somewhere, of course, if you want to investigate, that's your business. And whatever you find out, whatever you want to use it for, that's your business. But you don't say that is how preachers behave. You may have some preachers do that. But that doesn't mean all preachers do that. No, no, no. There are genuine people of God who trust in the Lord. And their trust in the Lord produces result for them. And, and, and when that result is produced, it's not even produced because of you. That's one thing people don't know. You know, sometimes people just think preachers live for people. Not necessarily. Jesus was with Peter in the room. And then there was a knock on the door. Who's that? We are tax collectors. Okay. Oh, no, no. Just Jesus and Peter were together. And Jesus asked Peter, are we supposed to pay tax? Peter said, no, it's foreigners that pay tax, not citizens. Jesus said, yeah, so we're free. He said, yeah, don't mind these stupid people. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. And Jesus said, you know what, Peter, let's not offend them. Hey, but I don't have money. And I know you don't used to carry money. <laughs> it's good. And it's not a problem. Take your hook. You, you still have your fishing hook, right? Yeah. Go to the sea. The first fish you catch. Open the mouth. You see coins. And use that coins to pay for you and I. Lord, is it? Yeah, yeah. Peter, do it. Let's not offend these people. And Peter went and and caught the fish. Now, this was a private thing. This wasn't done before the crowd. This wasn't done before church members. No, the other disciples were not even there. You understand what I'm talking about? It was a private thing. And what did Jesus do? He functioned in, the, he rather used the miraculous power to solve a problem. Jesus was at the wedding in John chapter 2. Now I've told you before, it was his family wedding. See, one of Jesus' sisters was getting married. Okay, so now here they were 
And his mother walks up to him and said, the wine is finished. And he said, so what do you want me to do? <laughs> he said, how can you ask that kind of question? Anyway, no need talking to you. She went to the server and said, go and meet him as per first book. Whatever he tells you to do, do. Now, we don't even know if Mary was expecting him to do a miracle or to just bring the money for wine. You see, she, did, she didn't necessarily go to him so that he would perform a miracle. No. She walked up to him and she, all she was trying to do is take responsibility. There is no wine. And what did Jesus do? Okay. Um, they came to him. So the, the, the servants came to him and said, Sir, um, mommy said we should meet you. You know, like we we'll do today. Okay. Now, you can't run away from it. All right. Fill the water pots with water. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. And then they go, not knowing what they are expecting. And then fill the water pot with well. That's how we've done it. All the water pots are filled. Okay. Now fetch from it and go give to the chairman of the occasion. As in, you should wash his hand. No, no, take a cup. Fetch from this water you have filled. Now go give to the chairman. And then they gave to the chairman without saying anything to him. The chairman drank. Hey, 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 guys, everybody listen. I've been to several weddings. I've cheered several weddings. And normally, they always leave the, the, the bad wine till when people are drunk. They serve the bad wine. But this is the first wedding I'm attending that they kept the good wine till this time. No, this is amazing. And all the servants were like, whoo. Now, don't think all the disciples of Jesus even understood what was going on. <laughs> Not necessarily. Praise God. Yes. He didn't call. Jesus didn't call the attention of everybody. Hey, everybody, come and see. I want to do a miracle. Come and see. No. John wrote about it not because everybody knew about it. John wrote about it because he understood what happened because he was close to Jesus. See? He was close to Jesus. I said, wow. Whoa. There are people who must have left that wedding not knowing what happened. So don't always think miracles are for sure. No. They are to solve issues. I know sometimes people love it to use it for sure. But the truth is, miracles are God's intervention to solve physical issues. And that's why you read Jesus will step into a place and heal someone secretly and leave. The most important thing is this. I'm sharing this for, for this purpose. That you will understand that God has called you to live the good life. And, and that's why he created you in his image. God loves good things. Haven't you noticed? Look at his creation. Look at everything he has created. Look at the formation of the clouds. Just, just, just look at everything. You see splendor. And that same God created you in his own image. So what, what do you expect of yourself? Good things. He wouldn't, he wouldn't create us in his own image. And then he, he loves good things. I say, no, 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 you, you can't even dare like anything good. If you do, I will send you to hell. Come on now. Those things don't make us. Those things are just for the using. If God but blessed you with money, What's the reason for the money? Not just so that you spend it on yourself. Not just so that you store it. You know, some people store up so much money and then they, they suffer. They, they barely eat good food. And why? Nah, I'm saving. It's good to save as you're planning. But let me tell you the truth. Don't do that to the detriment of you living a good life. Don't do that to the detriment of your children living a good life. If you trust in the Lord, he has orchestrated you to live the good life. And so it's left for you to find out from, from the Spirit of God, what part am I supposed to take? And when he begins to lead you in that path, don't spare nothing. If God says, go to so and so city, think of the best means of transportation to that city. Yes. 
He can afford it. Why can't you? Oh, Pastor Tobo, you don't know. Sometimes, you know, we have to plan ahead. That's against the teachings of Jesus. There are lots of things we do that are against the things that Jesus taught. Do you know that? Oh, we need to plan ahead. We need, it sounds so good. But is that what the Lord told you to do? It sounds good. Why does it sound good? Because of the things you have learned in the world. Yes. Praise God. That's why it sounds good. So the world give you example. You see that man, he did not plan. See where he ended up. You see this one, he planned very well. See where he ended up. Like, oh, wow. It doesn't mean it's the best. The best things are the things the Lord have commanded you to do. And my time is up. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. See, I'm sharing this with you to open up your mind. There are lots of possibilities that exist in your heart if you will let them flow. Because God is ready to help you. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.